diverse peoples to inhabit our soil, the culture of the indigenous peoples of Guyana serve as a core foundation of our country's patrimony. Now, as Guyana again observes Indigenous Heritage Month, attention must be paid to key areas of development needed in indigenous communities. On this episode of Government in Action, we focus on policies and initiatives that aim at the development of the indigenous peoples of Guyana as part of the government's overall aim of achieving a good life for all Guyanese. The indigenous peoples of Guyana make up over 10% of our population and reside in 215 communities scattered across 30,000 square kilometers of our national territory over which they preside. As our first peoples, the protection, preservation and promulgation of their cultural heritage is therefore enshrined in the constitution of Guyana. At the opening ceremony of the Indigenous Heritage Month in early September, President David Granger renewed government's commitment in ensuring that the right to the preservation of their heritage is not diminished. However, the president acknowledged that there are some burning issues within their communities that hinder the overall standard of living of the indigenous peoples. The cultural heritage of our indigenous communities, unfortunately, is under threat. The slow pace of economic growth threatens communities. Limited economic opportunities over the past two decades have caused some distress and even some migration. These concerns added to the existence of social issues such as low levels of education, vector-borne diseases, trafficking in persons, teenage pregnancy, crime and other social ills call for the ANTI to be upped in tackling these issues. The president has said that though significant strides have been made by the indigenous peoples, there still exists inequality in hinterland communities. Since taking up office, the head of state has also outlined key areas of interest and proposed solutions that hold the key to developing the way of life of the indigenous peoples of Guyana. We have to make a choice, and that choice must be between progress and prejudice. We have to make a choice between integration and segregation. And once we make those choices, we have to work strenuously to ensure that our people all over the country receive the benefits of the development of this great country and this great continent. With education as a major focus on his agenda, the president has therefore pushed the importance of education in these communities. So we too have an obligation to our children that if the children are to be productive citizens, if the children are to be productive citizens, we, their parents and grandparents, have to make sure that we plan for their education, plan for their upbringing, plan for their welfare. Moreover, he added that education must also include information communication technology so as to stay on par with the ever-changing technological age. While speaking at the Heritage Day celebrations at Mainstay Waiaka, Pomeroon, Supernam, the president announced that government will seek to develop ICT by ensuring that every public building, particularly schools, hospitals and airports, are equipped with Wi-Fi. President Granger has also plugged entrepreneurship as a means of betterment for the hinterland communities. During visits to several communities, the president has urged persons to develop the spirit of entrepreneurship, which will serve as a means of tackling unemployment in those areas, while persons utilize the abundance of resources that the hinterland has to offer. Efforts in entrepreneurial development can be seen through the establishment of the Hinterland Employment Youth Service, Hayes, which aims at providing skills training for approximately 2,000 youth in those areas. The Hayes Initiative was announced last year at the National Tushals Conference by President David Granger and is now championed by the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs. Vice President and Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Mr. Sidney Alicock, has described the Hayes Initiative as a program aimed at investing and strengthening the youth as the Indigenous peoples need strong leadership which will help them to move forward successfully. The program is, as we see it, being able to frame the minds of our young people who are the key to the success of all Guyanese.
more so for the indigenous peoples. Our youth's learning skills, which will take them through life, and this is critical. They are also benefiting from youth leadership training compliments to the presidential advisor on youth empowerment and his team. Plans to expand the initiative, the minister said, are well on the way since investment in the youth lead to the investment in the future well-being of indigenous peoples. It is our intention to inject into the curriculum of Hayes a cooperative module because we believe in the ways of the indigenous peoples is to be working together. Unity is strength. We expect that taking together the training offered, our youth will strengthen the resolve of the indigenous peoples of Guyana to self-determine and to attain a higher level of economic independence. President Granger has also commended the ministry for helping to push entrepreneurial development, adding that it creates an enabling and empowering environment for young people. Meanwhile, the push toward entrepreneurship is also seen as a gateway for the development of value-added products as residents will move to make use of farm produce beyond raw production. But moving to improve the lives of our indigenous peoples must also come with administrative policies that will ensure that priorities are managed and that their interests are addressed in a timely and responsible manner. Apart from the Ministry, the structures responsible for managing the affairs of Indigenous peoples are the National Tushawas Council and the village councils located within individual communities. The NTC meets annually to discuss matters affecting Indigenous communities and to implement decisions that seek to solve their concerns. It was at the National Tushals Conference last year that President Granger outlined a 10-point action plan for the hinterland region. The plan sought to address issues such as youth employment, infrastructure, tourism, culture preservation, land titling and other areas which will seek to develop hinterland communities. At the opening of the 10th Annual National Tushals Council meeting in August this year, leaders expressed their willingness to continue to address issues within the 10-point plan. There are still issues that are burning within the indigenous peoples of this country. When I go into the hinterlands and I visit them, they would say to, to, to show Joel what is happening with this issue or land. And I would go and visit and see the conditions that my people are living in and the land issues and the pollution and the mining. It grieves my heart as a leader. Meanwhile, President Granger called for the establishment of a five-person National Indigenous Peoples Authority. The authority will oversee and monitor the implementation of decisions taken by the NTC and other local Indigenous bodies and aid in better administration of the affairs of the Indigenous peoples within individual communities. There are many issues you have to discuss during this week. We are aware of your responsibilities and the seriousness with which you take these meetings. Under the Ramanian Act, you are empowered to coordinate and integrate the activities of villages on a national basis. It is, however, very difficult for a single annual conference to execute day-to-day -day management to these complex problems which I have spoken about. Over such a vast area, from north to south and east to west. The conference therefore must ask itself whether there can be a different administrative approach to resolving these problems rather than meeting once a year and not being able to monitor the implementation of your decisions for 365 days.
The president stated that the authority will not take away from the role of the NTC or the ministry, but will aid in the effective implementation of decisions taken by the council. This year's conference also sought to deal with amendments to the Amerindian Act, which has received proposals to be renamed the Indigenous Peoples Act, as well as the effects of mining in hinterland communities and land titling concerns, the latter of which remains a top priority for government. On the September 2 edition of the Public Interest, President Granger explained that the matter of land titling will be addressed expeditiously by his government. My intention is to re-establish a form of Indigenous Peoples Lands Commission. This is what I've committed to, so that uh, demarcation could be done um, you know, to the satisfaction of both sides. I do not feel that it is fair for us to go further into the future without dealing with the lands issue. Land is life for the indigenous people. They are not interested in house lots. You know, they want land to hunt, they want land to farm, they want land to fish, they want land to cut timber for, for, for materials. So you can't give them a house lot. We have to deal with this issue once and for all. And the problem is that, particularly because of mining and of course the threat of uh, water pollution, uh, some people have tried to alter the boundaries so you really need a commission, because when people, one community tries to alter its boundaries, something intrudes on another community. So it is not something that could be embarked on unilaterally. And this is my commitment to the indigenous people, and it's going to happen. The president has, however, continued to spread his message on the benefits of education, entrepreneurship, and self-sufficiency as a means of encouragement for hinterland communities to aid in their own development, even as government continues to work toward infrastructural measures. The President's words have resonated with the people within many of the communities who believe that working together would also help the communities to move forward. I firmly believe that the issue of development or to make development a reality needs all elements, all people on board. Every one of us has the God-given responsibility to work together to better our community. What the President said today here was it is very good because in Region 1, we need to do the things that he spoke about. We need to do it and a lot of us out here, we're not doing it. We're just depending on going out of the region to find work or the, like we find other means and ways of making money. But we're not doing like farming, the things that we see around us daily and that we could make a dollar out of it. Like walk, the young people and everybody else, not only the young people, even the older ones, do, as he say. Not just listen today, and when the president gone, we, oh yes, president says something nice today, encouraging, and it's, that's it. But overall, it is believed that the betterment that government is aiming for can only be achieved through a collaborative effort of all ministries and other stakeholders. There are countless lessons to be learned, endless uncharted waters to navigate, and unimaginably long miles of roads yet to be built. With the collective will and the unity of purpose, we shall succeed. This is not the end of my wish list. I wish that the unity and diversity of indigenous peoples of Guyana will be used as a success story to inform, secure, and perpetuate true and lasting unity of Guyana's six people, six peoples. The Ministry is also looking to partner with other ministries to focus on infrastructural, social and other issues, while also looking to develop projects and initiatives that will seek in the betterment of the lives of our Indigenous peoples. This is Jasmine Payne. Thank you for joining us.